Good evening. We'd like to call the <coughs> Durham City Council meeting in order at 7 p.m. Uh, Monday evening, October the 3rd, and certainly November the 3rd, and certainly want to welcome all of you that are with us this evening. If we could just take a moment of a silent meditation, please. Thank you. I ask Councilman Brown if he would lead us in the pledge. All right. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Councilmember Brown. Here. Councilmember Katati. Councilmember Davis. Councilmember Moffitt. Here. And Councilmember Shule. Uh, this, this evening, uh, we have several guests with us this evening. Uh, probably many, if not most of you, uh, may have heard that there was uh, potential uh, case of person with uh, Ebola. Fortunately, that right now everything seemed to be negative about that. But yesterday evening, uh, I received a call from uh, Mary Ann Black, who's present, and uh, later Dr. Monty Brown. Of course, we've got our health director, Gail Harris, with us, uh, basically alerting me to the fact that there's a possibility that a person in Person County uh, was coming to Duke for observations and to look to see whether or not. Uh, if, in fact, it was a case of Ebola. Fortunately, uh, what we've heard so far today let the test turn out negative. But in any event, uh, Dr. Brown was kind enough to offer to come to our city council meeting this evening uh, to share uh, whatever information that, that he could and in, uh, hope to be as very transparent as, as possible in an issue like that. I think we all know that we're fortunate to live in a region where we have great health institutions uh, not the least of which is at Duke University. So I certainly um, uh, invited him and uh, asked if he would come. We'd be pleased to have him this evening. I also received a call earlier this morning at my house from one of my former colleagues, Councilman uh, Thomas Stitt, who all of you know is now the uh, Chief of Staff for the Governor of the State of North Carolina. And Thomas basically was informing me that uh, the state uh, obviously was, was involved and uh, that they were looking very closely at it, but he just wanted to make us aware of uh, what was occurring. And I told him I'd received a call the night before from, uh, from Duke, and uh, hopefully we're going to have someone here this evening to at least bring us up to date on that. Now, Dr. Brown is a graduate, a 1981 graduate of uh, Stanford University, and received his uh, medical degree from Baylor College in 1986. Uh, he's been at Duke since 2005 and really is serving as the chief operating officer uh, for the private diagnostic clinic. Uh, he's vice chairman of medicine for clinical operations, finance, and strategic planning at the Brigham and Women's Hospital and System Press of Medicine at Harvard Medical School. Uh, he was named vice president of administration for Duke University Health System and associate dean of federal affairs for the Duke University School of Medicine in April 2006. Uh, he reports directly to the Chancellor of Health Affairs and plays a very key role in guiding and implementing the health system, strategic plan, and coordination with the School of Medicine, School of Nursing, as well as Duke University regarding Duke Medicine activities, including serving on the President's Senior Leadership Group. Dr. Brown is the Secretary for Duke University Health System, and during his tenure, Dr. Brown has served in many roles, including twice as the Duke Medical Chief Information Officer overseeing the IT needs of Duke Medicine, and also overseeing all facility planning, design, maintenance, and construction related to activities for Duke Medicine, including Duke University Health System, Duke University School of Medicine, and the Duke University School of Nursing and the Private Diagnostic Clinic. Uh, he didn't ask for all of that, but I just thought it was very <laughs> appropriate that uh, we share this with you to uh, show you the man that's coming before us this evening. So I would uh, ask Dr. Brown if he would uh, join us at this time. Thank you very much. Um, actually, first I want to say that I'm actually here representing a big team that's behind you, and I think that most of the um, 
uh, is actually in the press at this time, but actually that stress is one of our main tenants that why I called uh, you yesterday and why I'm here today is that Duke really wants to be transparent in its processes and I wanted to describe a little bit of what we've been doing to prepare for this and why we think that we're actually uh, here to protect the community. So when Ebola started to evolve, uh, we actually have a great group of uh, infectious disease experts, infection control. We actually formed committees to really look at what our preparedness was. Um, and we were fortunate enough that besides the clinicians we actually had, as you know, in Durham um, and part of Duke, a research facility which has been dealing with uh, having to don and doff these, if those are English words, we're still debating that, uh, all of this equipment. So we actually brought together both the research and the clinical side. Um, we actually were fortunate enough, and some of this luck, is that we actually had some, uh, an empty ICU from the moving from the old building to the new Duke Medicine Pavilion that we actually um, began to use what was learned from all around the world, uh, including our own research, to actually produce a, a unit that, was, uh, that would safely care for these patients. So any patient who presents for even for rule out at Duke will go directly to an isolated unit within the uh, hospital where there are no other patients and everybody caring on that unit will have no other duties, so anybody coming to Duke will know that their caregiver is not taking care of any other patient that might be on this unit. Uh, we're also taking extraordinary measures that these, uh, anybody who works on that unit will be provided uh, you know, housing or anything else if they don't feel comfortable going home. Um, so we're doing as much as we can to actually protect, protect the, uh, um, the community at large. We at Duke have actually educated all of our clinics. We put it into the screening process. So if you get, go to one of our clinics and don't get asked the screening questions, I want to know about it. We've actually put it into the Duke EPIC system, which is then being used now nationally going across the country to ask these same questions. So we have a very regimented process that if you get asked the three questions, that doesn't mean you have Ebola, but have you been out of the country? Have you been to these three countries? And uh, do you have any symptoms? You then get called and seen by a group of dedicated ID experts who will then, then do further analysis. And as you may know, we actually had some other inc incidents in the city where they initially screened positive, but actually then don't have any real risk factors for Ebola. This recent one, obviously, we felt was strong enough that we needed to activate the team. There was great coordination, and everything went right in this case that we asked for in the country. The patients self-identified themselves. They didn't come to an ER or clinic. The patient was transferred directly to Duke to the unit, did not go through any clinic or any ER, and was cared for by people who knew what was going on with the right expertise and training. We've actually practiced this, practiced this, and practiced this. So we felt we were ready, and yesterday that actually turned to be true. Um, so I think the answer is it with our colleagues here uh, and across the state that we uh, think that we have the right system. That doesn't mean that we can't do better. We're always back to training and we're improving as we go. But I think that everybody should be assured um, that what we're doing is the best we can. Again, we certainly appreciate uh, the fact that Duke is as proactive as it is in this, this instance. And uh, I, I know that uh, someone asked me, had I heard anybody call me? Fortunately, no one has called me on this. And I, I think it's primarily because the word got out early enough and hopefully uh, any fears that persons might have had, hopefully were allayed with the media coordination that, that you guys were able to do. Uh, I know I don't want to violate any HIPAA rules in terms of the patient, but is there anything else you might share with us in terms of how well that person is doing? Uh, I, I think what was said publicly earlier today by the uh, um, Secretary of Health Human Services that um, is where the patient is stable and there's been no change, okay, which good. is a good thing. Great. Um, I will say that we will continue to be transparent. We have actually notified all of our patients in the hospital, and I can't tell you the number of thanks we got from the staff and from the patients of just totally being transparent. And therefore, the fact that you're not getting called means that we're doing our job because they're getting communicated from us, Absolutely. which is our goal. Well, I don't know if any of my colleagues that recognize Councilman Shule. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to say, as a Duke employee, I also got an email uh, describing to me in a lot of detail uh, that what you have described, and that was early on, and I, I, it was actually quite uh, uh, comforting and uh, confidence-building to get it, and so I really appreciate you all taking those steps as well. Thank Councilman Moffitt. Thank you. I, I have just two questions for you. The first is, is that um, I read at one point there would be a system of regional facilities 
designed to um, treat patients um, who were presenting symptoms. Is Duke one of those the, regional facilities? Because I looked at the article and I didn't think that at that time that Duke was so designated. There's no designation of a regional referral center anywhere within North Carolina. Okay. We've you know identified to all of our partners and uh, uh, owned hospitals that no matter what, every clinic, every ER has to be able to do the number one thing, which is screen the patients. They then have to be able to identify them and isolate them for their protection, the staff's protection, and be able to care for them for a limited number, uh, limited time. And then we will be able to assess whether or not we can then take them. Because there could become a time not that it is predicted or hopeful, but at some point they have to be able to care for themselves. As you can see, this has taken a lot of effort. Uh, we are reaching out. We've actually reached out to other different facilities and we're offering our training services. We've offered it to some branches of the government here locally who have not been able to get training resources elsewhere. So we're doing train the trainer. Uh, so I think this will take a time to build, but every big hospital system around here, UNC, all the rest, are gearing for the capability. Not that we would take a patient you know, from uh, uh, directly from Africa, but we all have to be able to be ready to take care of our own. And I think that we're well along the way, but there's still um, not a, uh, not everybody was had the luxury of us having a empty unit. And so sometimes luck is good. And the other thing I just, um, if I understood correctly, uh, the level of preparation you all have done extended to a specially equipped um, vehicle for transporting the patient. Uh, we designated a specific vehicle and then outfitted it um, with guidelines under the CDC. And so when the patient then is identified, one of two vehicles is uh, used to transport the patient with all the appropriate gear and the uh, ambulance protected from uh, if their patient would be vomiting or having diarrhea. So it's taking two existing vehicles and slightly uh, modifying it. So I, I just want to sort of echo um, other comments, which is I'm delighted to live in a community where we have such great health facilities, both at UNC and at Duke, and I uh, continue to be delighted and uh, appreciate you coming tonight and sharing with us the preparation you all have done. I recognize the Mayor Pro Tem and Councilman Brown. Good evening. I would just like to thank you and your team of professionals for coming, carving out time to come and share with us this evening. And we know we're in good hands. <clears throat> thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, again, thanks for, for coming, Dr. Brown. Is it possible for you to give us a little history on how the, the patient ended up here at Duke? Um, the, it was described um, by the secretary during the um, last night that the patient um, self-identified themselves as having a fever. They had a piece of paper that was given to them from uh, when they arrived in New Jersey about what the process was about uh, taking their temperature and was uh, they called the CDC once they um, thought they had a fever. The CDC then called the state public health department who then identified Person County um, Health Department um, and then it was the state who then called us once they identified that this patient had been to Liberia and then had identified a fever. So it's actually part of the national screening process that identified the patient. Good. And it seems like that that's finally now in place, unlike perhaps a, a month or two ago, the process for identifying. The data of this case, it worked. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I certainly want to thank you again for taking the time to be here. I, I don't want to let Marianne or Gail or her staff leave. If you, any of you have any comments that you'd like to make, Gail's our county health director. I don't know if there's anything you might want to share. Good evening. Um, I just want to reaffirm the fact that the Public Health Department plays a role in um, contact tracing and communicable disease control. And we work very closely with the state, in, uh, who in turn works with um, CDC. And we have, since July, spent a great deal of time figuring out what our role would be in practicing um, in just scenarios. And we meet every Friday with our community partners um, over a conference call with the state to figure out what's happening and what next steps should be. So I think you should be very content or pleased to know that within the community there is the relationship among key partners 
um, that will effectively address the issues uh, that should develop. And there always there are lessons that are learned and we'll uh, continue to have conversation so that we'll do it better next time. All of us, um, we were in Raleigh last night at 9.30. We were on the phone at 12.30 a.m. We were on the phone at 3.30 this morning and in a conference call at 7.30. So it's been a long day. But Arlene Senior, our medical director is here who is also board certified infectious disease uh, specialist who works with the department and leads our team. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. You can go home and get some rest. Yeah. Great. Right. Again, thank all of you. Appreciate it. I'd like to recognize Councilman Shul and others for comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is not as serious a matter as that, but it is a public health matter. Um, uh, like three years ago, uh, when we were talking about renewing our contract for uh, health care for our health insurance. I foolishly mentioned that I would race uh, city employees who so desired. And uh, so for the last three years, then the Human, Relation, uh, Human uh, Resources Department got a hold of it. Uh, and uh, for the last three years, we've had an event uh, in the fall, now officially called the Shul Challenge because it has a t-shirt to go with it. And uh, this year we had uh, 36 city employees and a number of uh, spouses and significant others, 40 some people out. And uh, it was a great event. Uh, it's part of the city's Healthy for Life uh, series of events. And people ran, strolled and walked. It was, it was not raining, but it was a little chilly. Um, we had some special guests. Uh, Jay Reinstein came in from Fayetteville for the event and uh, added some levity, as you can imagine. Uh, Diana Schreiber's husband came over and was one of the best runners that we had, Diana. Uh, and uh, I want to thank Dee Byers especially and Michelle Cash for supporting Dee uh, to make the event go. Uh, I am uh, pledged to read the, uh, the names into the uh, official record, which I will do. But let me just say that the winner uh, was Randy Stort of Inspections, and he ran less than seven and a half minute miles. Um, pretty good. And um, Eric Halstead came in second for the third year in a row and is angry and wants to win next time. He's in Public Works. Uh, and so the departments represented were Inspections, Public Works, Finance, Water Management, uh, Public Works, Fire Department, Parks and Rec, uh, city manager's department, uh, city manager's office, uh, Bo Ferguson was there, and uh, Bo, you acquitted yourself quite well, I thought. <laughs> I did beat you, and I will beat you again next year. Uh, the fleet department, uh, the police brought their uh, new group of uh, cadets, which was a lot of fun. They ran in unison. I think I may have said human resources, uh, neighborhood improvement, transportation. So a lot of departments were represented, and planning. Um, the, uh, there were three department heads there as well, Regina Youngblood, uh, and, uh, who I would say was best dressed, and David Boyd from Finance, who I would say had the best shoes. David, congratulations. Um, and uh, I will tell you the third, in a minute, the third department head, let me just also add that uh, the amazing and incredibly fit Bill Bell was there. Uh, and uh, again, also acquitted himself admirably uh, in the uh, five miles. Um, so here are the names that I'm going to read in. And at the first group, I am pledged to say they beat me. Okay, fine. Randy Stewart, Eric Halstead, Dan Schulman, Simon Lobdell, Dana Horncole, Dan Curia beat me, uh, Chief Curia, James Flom, and Tom Dawson, and Matt Sprouse. And then here's who didn't beat me, Bill Bell. <laughs> uh, David Boyd, Tina Carden, Mark Clancy, Bo Ferguson, Roger Flippin, Marquita Gist, Kenny Gooch, Alethea Hardy, Marvin Hembrick, Keith Herman, Andrew Holland, Giancarlo Ladaga, Zachary Letzinger, Robert Lewis, Lauren Milton, Ann Nicholson, Sheldon Perkins, Nick Schneider, Diana Schreiber, Lindsey Smart, Kyle Stewart, Mark Sykes, Thomas Thrall and Regina Youngblood, and thanks to all of them for attending, and it was fun. Let's 
Steve, I, I want to thank you again for initiating uh, that, that event. I, I just found out about it uh, this year. I'm not saying I would have done it if I would known earlier, but I, I did just find out about it this year. It was, it was great. Uh, the weather turned out well, and Steve lived up to his pledge. He bought beer for somebody. I don't know. It looked like it. And had T-shirts. So it, it was a fun event. Recognize Councilman Moffitt. I'm just going to say on a personal note, I love all you guys, but not as much as I love my wife, and yet here I am on my 14th anniversary. So shout out to my wife. Uh, Councilman Brown. Uh, Steve, when I used to uh, run, um, what, was this race disaggregated based upon age? Yeah, you speak into the mic. I needed the handicap. It should have been age adjusted. It was not, however. Oh, well, that, that explains a lot. <laughs> yeah, maybe next year. I mean, I, that's only fair, I think. Anyway, uh, <laughs> thanks for, for doing that, Steve. Last week, uh, one of our former city council members uh, died, uh, Chuck Grubb, perhaps some of you knew him, and he served uh, proudly and with distinction on the Durham City Council. Among other things, uh, Chuck was noted for his, his pledge and his commitment and his leadership uh, to keep the Durham Bulls in Durham. Uh, just a, a brief history, and that is that there was a referendum that was f on uh, issuing more money to renovate the existing ballpark, and that failed. It was countywide, and it failed for a variety of reasons, not the least of which, of which was the uh, overwhelming negative vote from Northern Durham County, and also f there were certain groups, uh, political active groups, who came out against it, including the People's Alliance. Um, what happened afterwards was, in my judgment, a, a, a prime example of leadership and vision. Chuck uh, teamed up with his neighbor, the uh, Mayor Harry Rodenizer. And ironically, both of them lived in Trinity Park in my neighborhood, uh, Chuck on Monmouth Avenue, and the Mayor Rodenizer on Watt Street. And in fact, their lots, their backyards abutted each other. But uh, Chuck was a Democrat, dash independent, and Harry was a Republican. But as you all know, we're nonpartisan on city council, but that was their political background. Uh, and so what they did was to come up with the idea of using COPS, C-O-P-S, Certificates of Participation. And what that did, <laughs> basically, was to eliminate the, uh, the public from participating in yet another referendum. Um, as a result of that, and it was also a close vote, uh, the city council approved the, the cops, and the result was that it passed, and you can now enjoy and see and experience and witness what has happened with the new Durham Bulls park. But more importantly, or just as importantly, I should say, thanks to the leadership of both Chuck and, and Harry, the spinoff from the development of that ballpark, there's no other word except to say incredible. Uh, for example, we have just uh, been given tonight uh, this CD entitled, Because No One Else Would, 
American Tobacco and the Durham Renaissance. And I doubt very seriously that this would have happened if the ballpark would not have passed because Jim Goodman had already started looking for property to build a new ballpark. And I think he had a piece uh, as an option on the other side of Research Triangle Park. So this was very, very serious and we came very close, very close indeed to losing the Durham Bulls. Um, so I think, Mr. Mayor, if we can have a moment of silence for Chuck Grubb uh, and a very well-deserved moment, that would be appropriate. Thank you. Thanks, Gene. That was very appropriate. Uh, I, I remind people constantly, but not for Chuck Grubb and the mayor and the colleagues, uh, those things that you mentioned uh, in all likely would not have, not have happened. Uh, the only one difference was, as I was chairman of the board of commissioners when we did the referendum, it wasn't to redevelop the park. We were going to build a new ballpark, and the site was going to be University Ford. That's the, the plan was to have a new ballpark built, and we were going to do it on University Ford, and Glaxo was going to renovate the American Tobacco campus. But when the referendum fell, all that went to pot, and fortunately, Chuck stepped up, and we are where we are. But very, very appropriate. Uh, any other comments by members of the council? I recognize Councilwoman Katati. As if anyone actually needs a reminder, just want to remind everyone that polls are open at 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. tomorrow. Please go out and vote. Your life does depend on it. That's great, Diane, and do that again when we sign off. Okay. Um, let me ask whether any priority items first by the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the priority items identified in the October 30th uh, memorandum to council remain agenda item number seven, guidelines for dedicated funding source, funded small uh, project development, neighborhood revitalization. Uh, that item is being deferred to the November 6th work session on Thursday. Uh, we will be asking the council to consider uh, suspending the rules and voting at that time. And agenda item number 12 was the contract between Musco Sports Lighting LLC and the city for sports lighting at Garrett Road Park Tennis Courts. Uh, there was some additional information that was provided uh, to accompany this agenda item. Entertain a motion on the city manager's prior times. It's been properly moved and seconded by the Mayor Pro Tem, Councilwoman Katani. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes 7 to 0. Likewise, uh, City Attorney. Right? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. And Madam Clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we'll proceed with the agenda as uh, printed. We first will go through the consent agenda items and those items that could be approved with a single vote if a council member chooses to remove an item. We'll discuss that later. Likewise, if someone in the public chooses to uh, remove that item, we'll discuss that later also. Uh, item number one is board committees and commission attendance reports to the period of July 1, 2013 through June 30, 2014. Item two is Recreation Advisory Commission appointment. Item three is the Durham Open Space and Trails Commission appointment. Item four is the Durham Convention and Visitors Bureau of Tourism Development Authority reappointments. Item five is Street and Infrastructure Acceptances. Item six is Inventory Audit for June 2014. Item seven has been referred back to our uh, work session. Item eight is Durham Central Park Waterline Replacement Project. Uh, pull that item. Item nine is resolution of support for the Jordan Lake Partnership in the Triangle Regional Water Supply. Item 10 is bid report for September 2014. Item 11 is proposed advanced acquisition for the future expansion of Lake Mickey property of Raymond Allen Jones and wife Ellen, Elaine K. Jones. Item 12 has been referred back. No, uh, no, item 12 just says supplemental information. Oh, supplemental information, okay. Item 13 is dedication of drainage easements on city-owned parcel number 206562 to North Carolina Department of Transportation via Platt. Item 14 is acceptance of the donation of a sculpture from Liberty Arts, Inc. 
items 17 through 20 items that can be found on the general business agenda as public hearings. Entertain a motion for the approval of the consent agenda for the exception of items 7, 12, uh, and 8. Including item 12. Including right? 12, uh, including right. 12 with the exception of 7 and 8. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Uh, recognize Councilwoman Katani. I just wanted to briefly recognize the folks that are here from Liberty Arts and thank you for your generous donation to the city. We're all looking forward to enjoying it. Thank you. Thank you. Under general business agenda public hearings, item 17 is Unified Development Ordinance, Text Amendment, Industrial Light Project Boundary Buffer TC 14002. Thank you very much, Michael Stock with the Planning Department. Uh, before, I, before I begin, staff would like to indicate that the notifications for all the public hearings, uh, public hearing items tonight before you have been performed according to law and affidavits to those notifications are on file for review. Uh, text Amendment. Uh, TC 140002 is a privately initiated request by Morningstar Law Group to modify the required project boundary buffer required for properties zoned uh, industrial light or IL adjacent to develop properties without a buffer in the industrial or I zoning district. The amendment would reduce a potential 100% buffer opacity to 40% opacity with corresponding reductions in buffered width and would be also limited to properties of four acres or less. As part of this request, planning staff also proposes a minor reorgani reorganization of UDO paragraph 943. Uh, for clarity purposes, this change would create a new paragraph 943C modifications to the project boundary buffer table. And in this paragraph, staff has just relocated the current uh, modification standards uh, already found in the UDO and has added the proposed standard within this request. No other changes are proposed. On August 6, 2014, joint City County Planning Committee reviewed the text amendment request and did not indicate any concerns with, the, with it. Uh, the Planning Commission recommended approval 13-0 of the text amendment on September 9th. The Planning Commission determined that the ordinance request is consistent with the adopted comprehensive plan and that the request is reasonable in public interest based upon comments received at the public hearing and the information within the staff report also found in your agenda packet. Uh, as a reminder, Council will be required to take two actions tonight uh, as similarly done with zoning map changes. Uh, the first action will be the actual vote on the amendment itself, and the second action, um, and that is attachment B, I'm sorry, and the second action will be uh, a vote on the appropriate statement of consistency uh, found in attachment C of your agenda packet. Uh, the applicant is here uh, to answer any questions. Uh, thank you, and I'll be also uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. You've heard the staff report. Let me first ask, are there questions, comments by members of the council on the staff report? This is a public hearing item. Recognize Councilman Shul. I don't have a question. I just have a statement, which is I thought this was exceptionally well explained. And a lot of times these things are hard for me to understand, but you made it easy, and I was most appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other comments about the council? Not just the public hearing. We have uh, one person that signed up to speak on this item, uh, Patrick Biker. Is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item, this being a public hearing? If not, I recognize Patrick Biker. You have three minutes. Good evening, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden, members of the City Council. My name is Patrick Biker. I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm an attorney here in Durham with Morningstar Law Group. I'm here tonight representing Wendy's International, and we are requesting your approval of this text amendment to reduce the required buffer between parcels zoned IL with less than four acres next to parcels that are zoned industrial. I also thought the staff report for this text amendment did a great job outlining the important issues, so I really don't have a lot to add on this item. Long story short, Wendy's wants to replace its store on Hillsborough Road that is over 35 years old with a tax value of about $155,000. Wendy's wants to replace it with a new store that will add new jobs and have a tax value that is significantly higher than the status quo. When we first looked at redeveloping this parcel on Hillsborough Road, we saw that it was 200 feet deep and that there was an industrial zone parcel behind Wendy's with a 12,500 square foot warehouse on it. Under the current regulations, there's a 25-foot street setback, and then because the property behind Wendy's is zoned industrial, there's an 80-foot buffer imposed in order to redevelop the Wendy's site. So out of the 200 feet that we have to work with, we lose 105 feet, more than half of the property, to setback and buffer. And to me, that just did not make a lot of sense. 
In contrast, we think it does make sense to ask for this minor text amendment that will spur redevelopment opportunities like the one we've just discussed for Wendy's. Uh, we respectfully ask for your approval, and I'll be happy to try to answer any questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Let me ask first of all the questions by members of the council. If not, is there anyone else that wants to speak or comment on this item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one else has to speak. I will declare the public hearing to be closed and I back before the council. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Now we have two attachments, so I assume you. Yeah. yeah. So is the motion on action attachment B? To adopt the order. Uh, moved by the Mayor Pro Tem, second by Councilman Shule. Call for the question. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes 7 to 0. Mr. Mayor, I move the uh, statement of assistance. Uh, moved by Councilman Shule, second by Councilman Moffitt. In discussion, hearing none, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. Do you mean to vote yes? Yes, I do. Okay, it passes seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Move to item 18. Zoning map change, Madry Residential Z 14000007. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, as you just indicated, zoning case Z 14000007, Madry Residential is a request to change the zoning map designation of 25.35 acres of property located at Barbie Road and NC Highway 54 uh, from its current zoning designations of residential suburban 20 or RS20, office institutional and commercial neighborhood to the requested designation of office institutional with a development plan. Uh, and if approved as submitted, this would allow a maximum of 175 multifamily residential units to be developed at this site. Um, the request is consistent with the future land use designation of the property uh, in the comprehensive plan which, which designates the site as office. Multifamily housing is consistent with the office designation. There are numerous text graphic and design commitments associated with this request uh, and they are detailed in your staff report and this includes dedication of right of way along NC 54 and Barbie Road and installation of additional asphalt to accommodate uh, a bike lane. Uh, staff determines that this request, as I mentioned earlier, is consistent with the comprehensive plan and other adopted policies and uh, ordinances of the city. Uh, the Planning Commission recommended approval at its September 9th meeting by a vote of 13 to 0. Uh, as noted in the previous text amendment case, uh, two motions are required for this item, attachment 8, which is the ordinance, and attachment 9, the consistency statement. Thank you. I'll be happy to take any questions. Again, this is a public hearing item. The public hearing is open. You've heard the staff report comments from the council on the staff report. Uh, if not, we have one person that is signed to speak on this item, item Gerard Edens. Is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item? This has been a public hearing. If not, you have three minutes. Good evening. Uh, Jared Edens with Edens Land Corp. I appreciate Pat's summary of the project. I'm just going to reiterate a couple of points. Um, as you see in the staff report, uh, this project actually reduces the number of trips that would be generated from the property by about 600 trips on Highway 54. I know uh, traffic sometimes a concern on 54. Uh, we are committing to installing bike lanes along the frontage of the property on both Barbie and 54. Uh, as Pat mentioned, we received unanimous approval at Planning Commission. And one thing I would like to add, uh, I would like to proffer, uh, the rezoning of this parcel will result in the potential of 13 additional students to the Durham school system. Uh, so I would like to proffer that a uh, payment of $500 per student, which is $6,500, will be made prior to the first final plat uh, for the property, which is the way we've done it in the past. Unless I'm missing something. You got something? It would, it would really need to be, the in order to be administratively um, enforceable, it would have to be prior to the first site plan. Okay, not a problem. Yeah. Uh, we did have a neighborhood meeting in July. Uh, we have no neighborhood opposition that I'm aware of, and I would be glad to answer any questions that you have. Uh, you've heard the proponent. Is any questions by members of the council? Again, is anyone in the audience wants to speak on this item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one else asked to speak. I would declare the public hearing to be closed. The matter is back before the council. Sorry. It's been moved by Councilman Katari, seconded by Councilman Shule. 
Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. Been moved by Councilman Mark, seconded by Councilwoman Katari. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. He passes seven to zero. Thank you. Moved item 19, comprehensive plan amendment. Corners at Briar Creek A12008. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Pat Young again with the Planning Department. Case A12008. Corners of Briar Creek is a uh, request to change the future land use map designation of uh, approximately 61 acres of property on the north side of US Highway 70 near the inter intersection of TW Alexander Drive um, from its current designation of commercial, low medium density residential and uh, to medium density residential uh, and commercial. Uh, the property before you represents an existing commercial node. What the applicant is requesting is um, slight intensification from the four to eight units allowed by low d medium density residential to six to 12 units under uh, medium density residential and reformation of the commercial node to, uh, to be uh, represented more nodal pattern. Staff recommends approval as the four criteria for comprehensive plan amendments are met and the Planning Commission recommended approval at its September 9th, 2014 meeting by a vote of 11 to two. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you, you've heard the staff report. Any comments, questions by members of the council? Uh, hearing none, recognize Patrick Biker. Um, Spiker, you have three minutes on this item. Again, is anyone else that wants to speak on this item? We have a public hearing. Not recognize Patrick Biker. Good evening, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden, members of the City Council. My name is Patrick Biker. I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm an attorney with Morningstar Law Group in Durham. I'm here tonight representing Creekwood Highway 70 Alexander LLC. We are requesting your approval of this planned amendment for slightly more than 60 acres located primarily in Wake County near the intersection of T.W. Alexander Drive and Glenwood Avenue. With me tonight is our traffic engineer, Earl Llewellyn, with Kimley Horn. Since you've just heard the staff report on this plan amendment, we don't have a whole lot to add on this topic. In a nutshell, we are requesting this plan amendment because the commercial area along this part of US 70 needs to be consolidated at the T.W. Alexander Drive intersection. This plan amendment will, will create an attractive commercial center rather than unattractive strip commercial development. Also, it is important to locate residential buildings on parcels that need to be developed with more sensitivity to environmental constraints, such as stream buffers and topography. Accordingly, for all these reasons, we respectfully ask for your approval of this plan amendment, and I'll be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions by members of the council? I recognize Councilman Shule. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Patrick, we discussed this already, but I wanted to ask mm -hmm. it, and, and so you could uh, talk about it a little bit. Uh, one of the uh, members of the Planning Commission had some objections, which I uh, wondered if you could uh, respond to a little bit, and that is that this it would not really create a new commercial node, but is rather simply an expansion of an already very large Briar Creek commercial node and that it is at odds in this sense with the intent and the letter of the comprehensive plan. So you and I have talked about that, mm -hmm. but I, I, I think it's an important uh, question, and I was hoping you mm -hmm. might be able to shed some light on your thoughts on that. Yes, Council Member Shul. Um, I, I thought about it, and um, to be brutally honest, I, I couldn't really track with the criticism from, from Commissioner Miller. I enjoy talking with Commissioner Miller about cases, but I didn't really understand the disagreement with this proposal the the staff report I thought outlined why it made sense to take some of the what our plan amendment does is take some of the commercial frontage off of 70 and instead consolidate it with uh, the rest of the commercial development so it actually is reducing the property that's zoned I'm sorry designated for commercial along US 70 than what is uh, than what's currently on the books so um, with all due respect we we think this is the right thing to do um, Again, it's, it's um, important, I think, to look at what Wake County has done over in that uh, corner of the world. And uh, the density in terms of the residential is actually lower than, than what's uh, typically developed in that part of Wake County. And uh, certainly, I think the commercial is just a, uh, a logical extension of what's already there. Any other comments? Uh, again, anyone from the public here and on? 
recognize the response. Close the public hearing. As a matter of fact, before the council. Move the item. Second. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem, seconded by Councilman Brown. Madam Clerk, we open the vote. Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. Move to item 20. Zoning map change the corners at Briar Creek Z12000019. Thank you, Mr. Member, uh, Mayor and members of council. Pat Young with the Planning Department. Um, this is the zoning case associated with the previous um, plan amendment case, the corners at Briar Creek. It's a request to change the approximately 122.2 acres of property uh, at the north side of Highway 70 and TW Alexander from its current designation of rural residential or RR to uh, PDR, planned development residential 12.0 and commercial general. Uh, 61 acres of PDR 12 and 60.54 acres of commercial general. If approved as requested, this uh, approval would allow up to 603 residential units and 390,000 square feet of non-residential uses at the site. Um, this site is now consistent with the future land use designations of commercial and medium density residential. Uh, there are numerous te text, graphic, and design commitments associated with this request, uh, which are detailed in your staff report. And these include right-of-way dedication, uh, traffic mitigation improvements, and dedication of a 200-foot greenway easement through the site. Um, staff determines this, is, this request is consistent with a comprehensive plan uh, and other adopted policies and ordinances. The uh, Planning Commission recommended approval by a vote of 13 to 0 at its September 9, 2014 meeting, and uh, as was the case with the previous zoning map change and text amendment requests, uh, two items would be, two motions would be required, um, attachments 11 and 12 in your agenda. I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. It's a public hearing. You've heard the staff report, uh, comments, questions by members of the council. Uh, I recognize Patrick Biker, and are there others that want to speak on this item? If not, uh, Patrick, you have three minutes. Good evening again, Mayor Bell, Mayor Pro Tem, Cole McFadden, members of council. My name is Patrick Biker. I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm an attorney with Morningstar Law Group in Durham. Again, I'm here tonight representing Creekwood Highway 70, Alexander, LLC. We are requesting your approval of this zoning map change for slightly more than 120 acres, located primarily in Wake County near the intersection of TW Alexander Drive and Glenwood Avenue. And again, with us tonight is our traffic engineer, Earl Llewellyn of Kimley Horn. In regard to our zoning map change, we are calling this approximately 120-acre development the corners at Briar Creek. The northern half of this development will be a mix of apartments and townhouses, and the southern half, close to the corner of Alexander Drive and Glenwood Avenue, will be commercial. The Briar Creek submarket is strong for multifamily and even stronger for retail. The corners at Briar Creek represents a tremendous opportunity for the City of Durham to get a piece of the action in this hot corner of Wake County. Based on anecdotal evidence, it appears that many East Durham residents are spending a considerable portion of their disposable income in Raleigh at Briar Creek. The retail component of the corners at Briar Creek is Durham's opportunity not only to reduce this sales tax leakage, but also to attract Raleigh residents to spend their money within the Durham city limits. In conclusion, we are very excited to bring the corners at Briar Creek to you this evening. We have been working for more than two years on this ambitious project, and we think it will be a great asset to the city of Durham. In closing, uh, on behalf of our team, we want to express our, our deep appreciation for the mayor and the city council, the planning department staff, and especially the Durham delegation to the General Assembly for working on legislation that was approved this summer that made the city limits of Raleigh and Durham uh, match up with the property that's owned by our client. We very much appreciate that, and we wanted to state that on the record tonight. That's really all we have to say on this item. Uh, we respectfully ask for your approval, and I'll be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions by members of the council? I recognize Councilman Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, Patrick, you heard earlier that uh, another developer has uh, proffered $500 mm -hmm. per child for each of the mm -hmm. children in uh, additional children in Durham Public Schools, and. Uh, there are 20 uh, additional children that this development is projected to add to the population of Durham Public Schools, and I was wondering if you all had considered the same. Yes, sir. Uh, just for the record, our, our, uh, our developer, the applicant, will uh, contribute $10,000 to the Durham Public Schools, uh, reflecting $500 per student, uh, and we will uh, contribute that uh, 
prior to approval for the site plan for that section that's in Durham County. Thank you. I'd be happy to send that uh, extra committed element to the planning department in the morning. Thank Thanks. You. One further question uh, or just comment, uh, which we've also previously discussed. You've uh, the easement for the greenway uh, at some point uh, I, I, I hope and I know that you all uh, are planning to build a trail in that greenway once you have this the residences uh, there and mm -hmm. so could you talk about that a little bit well we need to uh, work actually with uh, our neighbors to the north the uh, Dell Webb development I know many of you have taken the opportunity to go through that uh, we, we we're talking with them. We have a very good relationship, but we certainly want to what we want to try to do is connect the um, uh, Carolina Arbors uh, Development through our development down to the commercial so we, we certainly will be working on that as this development moves forward and we're uh, we appreciate that comment. Thank you Thank you, mr. Mayor. All right, right. Councilman Moffitt <clears throat> Yes, at the if no one else has a question, I'll go ahead and move the item public hearing I haven't finished oh. uh, any further comments by the public let the record reflect no one else has to speak and I'll declare the public hearing to be closed matters back before the council and recognize council market I'm going to move that we approve the ordinance as provided in attachment 11 provided that the additional proffered elements mm -hmm. included uh, moved by councilman Moffitt second by the mayor pro tem madam clerk will you open the vote close the vote it passes seven to zero. We have another action that has to be taken. Consistency. Yes. Second. Uh, moved by Councilman Moffitt, second by the Mayor Pro Tem. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you very much. All right. We move back to the item that was pulled from the consent agenda. That is item. Eight was it eight? Yes. Uh, Durham Central Park Waterline Replacement Project contract award to CDM Smith Inc. Uh, uh, we had one person from the audience that already pulled it, and I think Councilman Moffitt had pulled it also. Uh, could we hear from the person in the audience first, if you don't mind, Councilman Moffitt? Uh, good, ap good afternoon, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of Council, Don Greeley, Department of Water Management. Um, the item before you for consideration is the uh, contract award for engineering services for the engineering design of the replacement water lines in the Durham Central Park area. The department sent out a uh, request for qualifications. Seven firms responded. The firm of CDM Smith was selected for the project. Um, also here tonight are two representatives from CDM Smith. Mr. Kevin Irby, who's a uh, vice president and client services manager from the Raleigh office and Ms. Patrice Robbins, who's a principal in the firm and the senior manager of the Affirmative Action Programs for CDM Smith from their Orlando office. Be here for, to answer questions. All right, thank you. Um, let, let me, all right, the mayor pro tem. The young lady is from what office? Uh, the Orlando office. Orlando, oh, yes. thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Razid Saudi. Yeah, three minutes. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Bell, City Manager Bonsfield. Uh, in my return from Ferguson, uh, I was given this task tonight by the Fade Coalition. Could you just state your name? Yes, my name is Rafiq Zadian Zadi. I reside at 807 South Duke Street, Durham, North Carolina. As a member of Fade, I was given uh, <laughs> this tough position tonight after coming from Ferguson, Missouri. Uh, and we face this same per problem in Ferguson, I understand. When that, uh, as I read last week's paper, I was glancing through it and I noticed that an alarming continuous presence and that this city has long <laughs> permitted contractors to come into the city. Black people are being ignored. Many of my brothers and sisters are going through the prison pipeline because they do not have jobs. True employment. What I am saying in these last 15 seconds, we are demanding, we are demanding that our black youth be trained, skilly, 
to be employed by these contractors. It make no sense that a company have 297 persons in their contract facilities and only one black, one black is in this contract. It is appalling. In line with the male's attempt to curb the property cycle in Durham and increase in the ec economic impact, this oppressed population, my people, will no longer stand by and let white supremacist systemic contractors come into this city without us demanding that we get a piece of the pie. Now, in my conclusion, you can do what you want to do with me. Like you arrested one of my fade members Halloween night and accosted her, but we got out of jail. That's another issue. You can do what you want to do with me. We are demanding that these white contractors who come into the city of Durham, North Carolina, employ my people. Let my people go or we're going to tear the city down. You will no longer have peace. It will not be the same old bootlegging ball game where the politicians suck up under your table and you pay them up under the table to keep us down. No longer will we play this game. And in my conclusion, may God bless you who have been elected to fight for justice for those who have been deprived. Take no mean price for justice because every time we fail to do justice, we set up judgment on ourselves and others. Ebola is just the tip of the iceberg. In Durham, the city of medicine, Durham, the city of medicine, I believe if Ebola would come to America on a mass plague, you deserve to handle it. All right, let's hear from Councilman Moffitt. Yes, thank you. Um, I, um, I had this item pulled because I um, did want to talk with the, I wanted to hear from the, um, uh, the recommended contractor on their efforts to recruit. Uh, they're located in Raleigh, and uh, although I share the, the sentiment, some of the sentiments of the previous speaker, the statistics that I'm seeing in front of me are slightly different. He said 267 with one black employee. I'm saying 68 total with um, not very many uh, black employees, but, uh, uh, but a few more than one. But I'd like to hear from the contractor on, on the efforts that you all are making and why you think that so far you're having so much difficulty in, in um, ha having in, in Raleigh a more diverse workforce. Okay, greetings. Um, I would like to, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to provide you with an update as to our progress towards attracting uh, minorities. Could, could you say your name I'm and sorry. address? I'm sorry. My name is Patrice Robbins. Um, I live in Orlando, Florida. Um, is there additional information? or Position with the company okay, again. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I am the Affirmative Action EEO Manager at CDM Smith. Okay, so um, we want to provide you with an update of our current demographics, outreach efforts, and successes. Um, when we last spoke with you, our minority percentage was at 19%, and we had three African Americans in the Raleigh office. And as of date, we made progress in increasing our minority population. Um, we now have 20%, but we are at five um, African Americans in the Raleigh office. And these positions do vary from technical to administrative. Now, in the brochure that you have, you will find um, more information regarding our workforce demographics. Um, CDM Smith is an affirmative action EEO um, employer, and we are continuing to um, find ways that we can increase our minority and just overall our diversity efforts. Um, our affirmative action plan does allow us the opportunity to compare our workforce to the local um, workforce and also to the national demographics. And we are happy to report that during our last affirmative action plan, we did have um, a goal to hire two technical professionals, minorities, particularly African Americans, and we did um, achieve that goal and we continue to try to go above and beyond. Um, we do have a long-term relationship with North Carolina A&T State University. Um, last year, the university presented us an award for advances in environmental sciences. 
Um, and other activities that we have done so far is participated in the Spring Career Fair. Um, we are active with the A&T Engineering Week Banquet. And also, um, we provide monetary donations to the National Society of Black Engineers and the Society of Women Engineers. Um, I would also like to highlight that um, last year, you, know, you had requested that we make an effort with North Carolina Central University. And we have contacted North Carolina Central University, and we have also made a hire from the university. Um, CDM Smith also um, participates in two scholarship programs um, with the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers and also through the United Negro College Fund. Um, these scholarships does offer $6,000 academic um, and also a paid internship, and we offer up to $2,500 in living and housing allowance during the duration of the internship. Um, we currently have a UNCF scholar student in the Raleigh office, and this past summer we had a UNC scholar in, from North Carolina A&T um, in the Orlando office. Um, we continue to partner with local workforce agencies, and we are a member of Direct Employers Network, which um, connects us with a variety of diversity organizations across the country. Um, and also in the brochure you will notice we are very um, community focused. Um, some of the larger put, um, organizations that we participate in is Water for People, but here locally, um, Mr. Kevin Irby, who is here with me, and also Bryant Green from the Water Management, um, spoke with students at Southern School of Engineering about careers in civil and environmental engineering. Because what we found is that there are a small number of students entering into the, minor, um, entering into the engineering and technical um, arena. So we thought that you know, by being proactive and speaking at the school can help engage the students at an earlier age. Um, so that's one of the things that we have done. Um, and then also another community outreach effort is with the um, Habitat for Humanity. This is our, sec we participated so far in two events um, in building a house um, here in Durham. Um, and on the last page of the brochure, um, on the back, you will notice some of our senior leadership here in the, um, North Carolina. Um, and we currently have six technical professional positions that we are hiring for in the Raleigh office. Um, we have listed out organizations that we can potentially recruit from, and we also will welcome your suggestions if you, know, you have any that you would like for us to pay closer attention to. Um, one resource that we were made aware of last week is the North Carolina Institute of Minority Economic Development. Um, and, you know, like I said, we will continue to make sure that we are looking for, you know, other opportunities where we can continue to improve our minority um, members in the Raleigh office. And for that, all over CDM Smith. Um, so hopefully you can see the progress and efforts that we've made in diversifying our workforce and if we can answer any questions. Recognize the mayor pro tem. Good evening, and uh, thank you for coming, and I appreciate the uh, progress you have made. Um, what kind of position does the North Carolina Central University person have, student? Um, is, he's in an administrative position. Yeah. Administrative okay. Position. Yeah. So, excuse me? And he's excellent. We've been very happy. Yeah, most eagles are. <laughs> <laughs> I say that from <laughs> experience, personal experience, that's right. Um, I noticed um, that you are subcontracting, subconsulting, if you will, to Rotafox Construction. What will they be doing? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, for this particular job, um, they will be assisting in, with the construction management. Uh, once, we, once we get with, through with the design, they'll be helping with the actual inspection uh, of, the, of the construction uh, project as it's ongoing. Uh, they'll have a full-time resident observer there observing construction as it takes place. Also during the design phase, we'll have them helping <coughs> with the cost estimating portion of the project. So you have someone based locally? The, yes, they'll, they'll be moving here for the project. Okay, yes. all right. And uh, the firm from Raleigh, what will they be doing? Uh, uh, CH Engineering, uh, they'll be doing surveying for us. Um, 
and that, that represents approximately, I think, 24% of the design project, which is well above and beyond the MWBE goal that was provided. And also, Rahod Fox during construction will be over 35% of that construct uh, of, of, of the, of the uh, contract for that work. Again, well above and beyond the MWBE goals for that. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I appreciate all that you do in Greensboro. Uh, for uh, A&T as well, and I don't want to sound selfish, but um, I'm particularly appreciative of uh, whatever you could do to help the local economy uh, here in Durham. Thank you for the strides that you've made uh, since you last shared information with us. We really appreciate this. Thank you for having us. When, when you're um, advertising positions, mm -hmm. uh, could you just put us in your email, um, okay. on, the, on your email list? Okay. Listen, okay. When I say us, uh, the city of Durham. Okay. Because we have uh, folk who are <coughs> seeking employment in other places who are applying here too, I think. Okay. Is there a particular person or um, probably human resources. Okay. Yeah. You think that's okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Human resources, Regina, young blood. Or economic development. I mean, or, or workforce development. And workforce development. Mm -hmm. Kevin Dick. Let me follow up with a question that um, the mayor pro tem asked about your subcontracts. Maybe I didn't look at the right thing. You mentioned Rotafox. I mean, they used to be in Durham. I know they're based in Atlanta. The memo I have says $5,000. Is that? Are they, that's, the, that's the line below. Yeah, the line Rotafox. Oh, is that what they recommend? Represents? Okay, so that Rotafox Construction Control Services, I mean, this control service is a different corporation? No, the, what is that? The, so, so what may be causing some confusion, the, the, the current contract before you is for the design piece okay. of, the, of, the, of the project, and they'll be more heavily involved in the construction inspection portion, which would... That's what I thought I heard you say, but... Yes, sir. So where, where maybe if somebody went to page three and explain what this is, I think Councilman Michael was trying to tell me. You had three firms. I thought it was two firms. Because construction control is in Atlanta, and this thing says this paper says five thousand dollars. So then, am I missing something? I thought Rotafox's company was. They, they are here in Durham. But they're based in Atlanta. They, yeah. they have yeah. also. That the whole name of them. That's the name yes. of this. It, it's that's one. That's the, one the name of the comp company is Rotafox Construction Control Services. That's the name of the company. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay. And okay. what I'm saying, what I'm saying is on, on this page where I see that company yeah. has an MSDBE, Atlanta, Georgia, the amount is $5,000. Yeah, um, so I'm trying to understand how somebody. I, yeah, Mabel, um, what's in the memo, this is for the engineering portion of the contract. Mm -hmm. um, as outlined in the memo, we'll be coming back with an amendment to the contract once it's designed, because right now we, we found for projects like this, it's more cost effective for the city to, after the design is complete, and we know what we're actually building, and everything's involved, then we negotiate the, the um, construction inspection services. Okay. So uh, Mr. Irby is referring to when we do the amendment for the contract for the construction control or the uh, construction inspection and the oversight of the construction, that's a, ma a majority of Road Fox's participation on the project. Uh, okay, well, that's a separate piece then. Yes, and I'll come by that a later date. I, I was it, dealing with what's before us, and right now, what before us that, that, that I mentioned, they're, they're, they're going to be helping during the design with some cost estimating assistance. Uh, during the design phase, so I think that's the five thousand dollar number, and then during the construction is when they'll have a much larger uh, contract, which again, as uh, Mr. Greeley mentioned, will be negotiated after the design. Once we know what exactly is going to be built, then we'll okay. be able to uh, more cost effectively negotiate a construction services and inspection piece. Which right. I, I'm familiar with there. the company. I mean, the president died, so I, I know yes, New Ron very well, and I know yes, the company. So uh, you're talking about a separate issue in terms of what they're going to be doing. What we're dealing with right now is only five thousand dollars of work that they're doing. Okay. Any any other comments? Recognize Councilman Marfin. I appreciate y'all coming tonight. 
in briefing us on the improvements. Um, for me, when we are looking at spending a million and a half dollars of city money, I, I want to see more. I want to see more diversity, and I want to see more improvements. You have six open positions. Uh, when do you think you'll have those filled? Um, I, I, you know, cannot tell you the time frame. I know when I did look at the open jobs, some of those jobs were um, recent, you know, jobs that were open up within the past two weeks. So, um, you know, I would, could get back with Mr. Irby and just let him know in terms of a time frame as to when they are starting to ramp up the recruitment for that. Okay. Um, I suspect your contract's going to get approved, but one of the things, Mr. Greeley, I would like to know, as when they hire, I'd like to know more about the people that they are able to hire for these six positions. So I'd like to see their progress. If you would just keep us, you can just via email or something. But right, I'll keep up to date with Mr. Irby and pass that on. Be more than happy to do that. Again, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. I can ask Councilman Davis and then the Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I, I would like to find out from you all um, as a company, uh, because it appears that your company wants to diversify. What is the major obstacle? Um, what, what, what is the barrier since you want a more diversified company, we want more diversity in the money that's spent from the city. What do, you, from your perspective, what do you think needs to be done by all of the entities to make everyone um, pleased with the diversity that we would have. Right. Um, as, as we had stated earlier, like one of the things is encouraging, you know, obviously high school students to start to think about engineering fields um, as well. But then when you look beyond that is um, just, you know, continuing to, you know, let different organizations in our community know about opportunities that we have available. Uh, you know, we know I had a call earlier with the recruiter, man, recruitment manager, and we also discussed how, you know, you know, like we want to make sure that we're getting not only minorities, but women, veterans, individuals with disabilities into the organizations. And um, we've been actively contacting, you know, organizations. So just, you know, like getting that bridge gap where, you know, we were actually, you know, hearing back from the different organizations and, you know, just developing a partnership so that we can, you know, try to start getting more, you know, diverse employees. Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, I was just looking on the <clears throat> uh, brochure to some reference to the Mayor's Summer Youth Program and did not know if you have participated for some reason, my sight is sort of dim with this glare. You're familiar with the mayor's summer, the Durham Mayor's Youth Works Program. You're familiar with that. I am not. No. Yeah, we, we seek uh, companies to help us um, finance jobs. I'm not asking you for money, to share mm -hmm. with you what, well, on the other hand, I guess I am. Um, <laughs> internships mm -hmm. during this summer and uh, contact the workforce development mm -hmm. uh, area for guiding. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Not entertain a motion on the item. Move by. It's been moved by Councilman, by the Mayor Pro Tem, second by Councilman Brown. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. Are there any other items to come before the council before Councilwoman Katati makes her final announcement? <laughs> if not, Councilwoman Katati. Just to remind everyone again that the polls will be open from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Please go vote. Thank you. And take some people with you. Take some people with you. Okay, great. Uh, the meeting is adjourned at 8.14 p.m. Thank you.